Today we're going to be creating this awesome clay brick material that you'll have available for use in all your renders. So to get started with that, let's go ahead and over to the shading workspace. Now that we're in the shading workspace, make sure you go ahead and enable the Node Wrangler add-on so you have all the shortcuts that I'll be using, and you'll find that in your preferences here. Then for the lighting, I just went to Rendered Preview and Unchecked Scene World, and I'm using the built-in forest. So now we'll hit New, type in like a clay brick, and we have our material to get started with. So to do this, we're going to hit Shift A. I'm going to search for a brick texture. Then with this selected, I'll press Control T, which will give us our texture coordinate and mapping. So if we control shift left click on this brick texture, we can see that it's not mapping properly. And that's because we're not using the right coordinates. We need to use UV coordinates like this. And now we have everything lining up correctly, except it's sort of flipped to 90 degrees. So to fix that, we're gonna to go to the Z here and flip it 90 degrees. You can also mess with your UV unwrap if you want to, to rotate it in there. But we'll just do it here, it's pretty easy. Then we're gonna grab this and move it over here and I'll grab the brick texture and then move it, move it this way. Then on this brick texture, we wanna change the mortar size so it's sort of not the same everywhere and we want it to look like the brick has some wear to it. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna search for a noise texture. We're gonna place that over here. Plug our vector into the vector of the noise texture and then Control Shift to left click to preview. I'm gonna change this scale here to a 50 and the detail up to a 10. Then I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna search for a map range node right here. Then I'm going to plug the result of the map range into the mortar size. So now I'll control shift left click to preview the brick texture. And currently it's way too big. So we need to change this to maximum value all the way down to a 0 0.02 like this. And then we need to bring this from minimum up to a 0.3 and then from max down to a 0.7. And as you can see here, it gives us our nice cool different sizes of mortar to where it looks like there's been some wear. Then we want to go over here to our scale on the brick texture and we're going to up that to a 10 like this. Then on this color one, we're gonna make it a pure white. And the color two, I'm gonna take this value down to a point one, just like this. Then to make it look a little bit more bricky and less blocky, we're gonna bring this brick width up to a 0.75, just like this. And the mortar smooth, we're gonna bring all the way up to a 0.5, just like that. Then we're gonna to wanna to factor this into our bump a little bit, or at least the mask for the bump. So we're gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna search for an invert node. And we're going to plug the factor into here. So if we control with the left click to preview, it gives us this, which is what we want. So then we're going to want to take these guys and move them a little bit over here. And we're going to give our actual brick some texture. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to search for a Musgrave texture, just like this. Then I'll plug our vector into the vector. Then with this selected, I'll control shift the left click to preview. I'm going to bring this one scale up to a 100 and the detail up to a six or er, a 10. Let's do a 10. That's looking okay. Then the dimension, I'm going to bring all the way down to a 0.5 like this. So we have some cool patterns going on. Then I'm going to press shift A, search for a map range node. And what this is going to do is it's going to leave all the values between zero and one so that we don't get anything too extreme or outside the actual color range. So now that we've done that, we're going to duplicate these guys. So I'm going to select them and press control shift D like this, and it'll give us new ones. Then we can shift and hold right click over this to get this guy here and I'll grab him and move him here to get stay organized. Then on this second one, I'll control shift left click the map range. I'm going to change the scale up to a 200 and the dimension up back up to a one like this. Then we want to sort of mix these together. So I'll hit Shift A, I'm gonna search for a mix RGB. I'm gonna plug this color into color two and this color into color one. And then for the mask on this, I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna search for an invert node like this. I'm gonna take the result of the map range into the color and this color into the factor. And that's just gonna give us better effects like that. Then I'm going to press Shift A. I'm gonna search for a math node. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna switch the function to greater than and I'm gonna change the threshold to a zero. So this is basically taking this mask and changing it into a pure black and white. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be factoring in some more noise into the black spots. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to search for a mix RGB. We already know that this is going to be the factor for it. And then we already know that this right here is going to be the color two. So if we preview them, we have this right now. And we need to, this isn't exactly what we want. Because if we change this to a black, we still have all those non-noisy parts. So we'll hit Shift A, search for a noise texture. Take this guy into the vector, and then we're going to change the scale on this noise texture up to a 300 and the detail to a 10. Then I'll press Shift A, or actually I'll just take this map range and press Shift D. Take this factor into the value. And then we're going to take the maximum here and bring it to a, down to a 0.5. So for preview, we have this. Then all we have to do is take this color into color 1 here. So now with the preview, we have something like this, which is what we want. Then after this guy, 
we're going to hit shift a i'm going to search for a math node this is going to be an add node and what this will do is it'll allow us to adjust the bump and the whites and stuff manually so now we're sort of running out of space so i'm just going to take this, these guys and grab them and move them over here so then after this add node we're going to press shift a i'm going to search for a map range node here and we're going to change the two minimum value to a 0.25 and what that's going to do is it's just going to make sure that we have some sort of bump going on everywhere so nothing is too flat. Then to factor this into just the brick, we're going to hit Shift A. I'm going to search for a mixed RGB. Plug this result into color 2. Color 1 is going to be a black. And the factor is going to be our invert node. So as you can see now, we're affecting the brick and not the uh, other stuff. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and bring this color into our normal. Except we need it to be bump data, so we're going to hit Shift A, search for a bump node plug it in between, and plug this color into the height. So now if we control shift and left click to preview our shader, we sort of have this going on with the brick. Let me find a better spot with a better lighting. We can go over here to the brighter side. And we can see the brick sort of coming through here. However, the bump isn't exactly what we want. We want it to be a little bit more pronounced. And maybe the strength on this guy's a little too high. So I'm going to change this to like a 0.5. And then I'm going to duplicate this bump node. So I'll press shift D, plug it in, plug it in after change the strength to a 1, and plug the invert node from the brick texture factor directly into the height. And what this will do is it'll make the brick more pronounced and the mortar more, more secluded sort of a thing. So cool. Now we have our bump and we have that going on. So let's go ahead and get into our color next. And to do that, we're going to be using our brick texture for the mask. So we'll hit shift Dave Mr. from Mix RGB. These are going to be our brick colors. I'm going to take this color into the factor, then this color 1, I'll go ahead and give you a hex value. That's going to be an AA4, A44, just like that. Nice, and we can control shift left click to preview them, looking like this. Then this color 2 is going to be a hex value of 702823, just like this. So now we sort of have our red brick going on. And afterwards, I'll press shift down and search for hue saturation known. And this will be just so we can adjust the hue and stuff if we want different colored bricks. We can change it to like a blue, desaturate it quite a bit, and then we sort of have a gray. Obviously, you can play with that however you want to change the colors really easily. So then we'll press Shift A. I'm going to search for a mix RGB, and we're going to be factoring in some sort of dirt and scuffedness to this. So this is going to go into color one, and color two is going to be a hex value of eight or five six four C, just like that, and that's going to be our dirt color. But we're going to need a factor for this, and we'll also need a factor for our mortar. And we'll do the mortar first. So I'll just press Shift D on this mix RGB right here. Move them down here. Then color one, I'm simply going to change to a gray for the mortar color. And I'll go ahead and give you hex value for that. I'm going to be using 83, 83, 83, just like this. Cool, so now we need some factors for the dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and press shift A. And I'm going to search up a noise texture, just like this. Plug him in, I'll plug him in over here. Take this vector up here. Then on this scale, I'm going to bring it up to a 100. The detail, I'll bring it up to a 10. And then the distortion, I'll put it to 0.3. Then I'll press shift A, I'm going to search for a map range node. Plug this factor in the value, and if I preview, we can see what we have here. I'm going to take this from minimum, bring it up to a 0.2, and the from max to a 0.8. Then I'll grab them and move them to the left. We're going to search for a math node. We're going to leave the function on add. I'll put it on zero for now. And this is just going to be where we can determine how much dirt we want to be adding into our brick. I'm going to leave this value at a negative 0.5, so that we have some here and there. And we're going to take this value here and plug it into our factor on this mix, and then also the factor on this bottom mix, just like this. Now if we control shift and left click to preview, we have this guy with some dirt in there, and we have this guy. And if we increase this, we get more dirt, and if we decrease it to like a negative one, we have no dirt. I'm gonna leave it at a negative 0.5. Now we need to mix these guys in together to affect the proper sides of the brick, so we'll hit shift A, search for mix RGB. We're gonna plug this color into color two, and this color into color one. Then we'll take this invert and plug it into the factor. So now if we preview, we have this for our color. Then we're just gonna take this mixed RGB color into the base color. And now if we preview, we have this, and it's starting to look pretty decent. However, I think the little grains are a little bit too strong. So we're gonna bring in this strength, like maybe a 0.1, maybe a 0.25, let's see that. Yeah, you can play with the strength on this however you want. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at a 0.25 because I think that looks pretty organic still. And then that's looking pretty good. So then on this roughness value, I'm going to bring it up to a 0.65, just like this. So it's not too rough, but it's still pretty rough all around. 
Now that we've done that, feel free to adjust the parameters however you need to to fit the role of the material you want for your scene. And since we just finished making this brick material, you may also be interested in creating something like asphalt or some sort of modern household materials. And you can find those in a playlist here somewhere. And so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed. Adios.